it's good idea to go to some locations where there is not much of other sounds and first concentrate on common birds. Learn about the bird before you go out and record it because that'll better prepare you not just in terms of what kind of equipment you select, but what kind of habitat you can expect and what time of day you need to go. I have a little mental inventory of uh, equipment that I'll need. So you want to have spare batteries always, or you will definitely run out right when that fairy bluebird is in the middle of his dawn chorus, and you'll be super bummed. So take all your equipment with you and check it. I learned very early to have something to eat before I went out in the morning because stomach rumble took over and came in. I like to carry a, a little notebook everywhere, and I, I actually write down the little recording ID and a few notes about the observation. I can just flip through my notes and get a sense of what I've recorded throughout the day. Let the tape roll. You can never have a recording that is too long. If a bird is cooperating, maximize it. Figure out where is a good spot that a bird might come back to and wait. And just sit and wait and see what shows up. That is how I have gotten the closest to and seen the most unusual behaviors of different birds, is by being patient. The ideal recording is one that really captures the target sound, you know, and everything else is, is in the background and with, with no interference from that darned environment, which is full of sounds of its own. And when you get a lock on a bird in the field, if you happen to be wearing headphones, you'll know when you have it. It will shimmer in your ears. And that to me is a feeling I can never get enough of.